Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video I'm going to show you how to run the Unify controller within Docker, which is quite timely given that the most commonly available image out there, the Linux server one, is being deprecated in favour of a new image which has an external Mongo database. Now this is probably only going to apply to those of you who don't have a Unify cloud key or something like a dream machine. I'm one of those people because I run Sophos XG. I like it because I can virtualize it and it has high availability, something that unfortunately Unify cannot do at the moment. And I've also shown you how to do this on things like OpenSense, which if you're using OpenSense, you'll likely need to follow this guide. Now, because I have other Unify hardware within my home lab, I have their access points and their switches, both of which I think are excellent. I need something to be able to manage them. So by self-hosting this in Docker, I actually do it in Kubernetes, and I might share that later on. But this gives me the access I require to be able to configure my devices, add new devices via informs, etc., and basically just construct my network how I want. So let's have a quick jump into the config review, and we'll have this up and running in no time. But quickly, before we do that, I recommend, especially if you're migrating from an existing setup, that's possible, that you go into your existing Unify controller, you go to your system, you go to your backups, and you hit the download. This is important because during the initial configuration of the new one that we're gonna set up today, you can actually use this to import your network. Now, provided that you're gonna give it things like the same IP address, for example, that should be a direct like-for-like -like replacement and you shouldn't notice any interruption in service and you should be able to log in with the same credentials and have access to all of your existing devices. You can obviously skip over this part if it's the first time you're doing this. So I'm just gonna download the most recent version of my backup and I'm gonna head on now to the configuration review. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this new container requires an external database and it's MongoDB. Now, I've pinned that to version 4.4 just because it's the latest version that's officially supported by the container. And as you can notice from on screen, I've managed to consolidate the Docker Compose, so we're going to deploy both images at the same time. Now, before we go through the overview of these containers, there's one thing we need to do first. And you can actually see that on screen down here. We need to create this script. Now, this is the init, the initialization script. And what happens is when MongoDB first starts up, it initializes the database. So that initialization script looks like this. And basically all we're doing is setting the database name, the database username, and the database password. So on this screen, I'm just gonna leave these as default values because this is what the recommended options were, but you can change these. The only thing you need to make sure is that these values match what you have in your Docker Compose file, and I'll show you that now. For instance, I've got Unify as the database, Unify as the user, I've got the password here, and then again, I've specified the Unify database. And if we look now back on the Docker Compose file, you can see that expressed here in the environment variables. You can see the Mongo data user, the password, the host, the port, and the DB name. So whatever you put in this JavaScript file, you just need to replicate that in your Compose or vice versa. The second one is just a separate database for the Unify stats. And again, it's just the same username and password with a different database name. So go ahead and copy this. As always, these files will be available on my GitHub and just change them to your setup. So let's go back to the Docker Compose and let's have a quick run through what's going on here. So we're creating a new Docker application here and we're pulling down the latest version of the Unify network application. We're giving it the same name as the container. We're running this as our local user with ID 1000. You can set your time zone here, which will be important to make sure that your networking metrics are correct. We're then going to specify where the database is, and these are the credentials that it's going to use to connect. So remember, you need to have the initialization script first, that will run first, and it uses these credentials here to then connect to that database. You can put some optional things in, like limiting the memory to a gigabyte, that's probably a good idea just so it doesn't run away. And you can also do some additional steps with TLS, etc. 
I haven't put those on, but feel free to go into the documentation and enable that if you want to. I'm going to run this through my reverse proxy, so that isn't really an issue, and everything's going to be on my same secured subnet. But if you wanted to encrypt the traffic, you could do that. Now, again, I'm going to be using a volume bind mount here, and I'm simply mapping this new folder created here to the slash config. So all of the configuration will be stored in this location. Now the ports are pretty straightforward and they'll be the same as the ports from the last container. So 8443 is going to be a self-signed HTTPS for the web GUI. I'm not going to go through the rest of the ports, but one of the important ones here is the 8080, which is used to inform new devices. Now this can get a bit complicated, especially for my setup where I have all of my devices on a separate network to my management network. That's right, my controller sits in my management VLAN and all my devices sit on a separate VLAN. I like to have it that way because it's on my default kind of bare bones LAN. So anything I plug in by default into my switch will go onto the 0.0, .0 network. And that's good because if everything else fails, I know I can plug straight in and get access to the devices. And that saved my bacon a few times. But it's important to have a firewall rule that allows traffic from that network to my management network. Otherwise that informs not going to work. So if you are going to split these through a VLAN, just make sure you've got those in place. It will save you a lot of headaches. Now, thanks to editing, I've also put in the traffic labels here, just because I think it's important to call out one key difference here. Now, this looks pretty similar to all of the videos that I've put out where we route the web interface through the traffic proxy, which gives us the nice green tick in the browser, and it means that our traffic's encrypted and we can use friendly URLs. But there's one thing here that's important, and it relates back to this part here. As I said, it's using 8443 with a self-signed certificate. We specify that load balancer port here, but the important thing is that we set the scheme to be HTTPS. Without this line, it's not going to work because it'll be trying to route it to HTTP, and that's just not going to be compatible. So make sure you add this line here, and this is true for anything you want to route that's got its own self-signed certificate through traffic. Once we've done that, it's the standard networking. So we add it to the proxy network. Obviously delete this if you don't want to run it through traffic. And I've also created a new network called Unify. So this container, the controller, is going to be on both because it serves both the web GUI and it needs to be on the Unify network, which in the next container, we've put the database onto that network. So nothing else in Docker can access the database, only the Unify controller. So going down to the database container is pretty straightforward. So we're pulling down version 4.4 of MongoDB. We're setting the data to reside in this folder here, which is mapped to data slash DB. And then we're calling the script that I mentioned earlier, which will be run the first time that MongoDB starts up. The only other thing here is that it's on that Unify network, as I just mentioned, for the same reasons. We don't want this accessible outside of this network. After that, we just simply define that the proxy is an external network, it's created elsewhere, and that the Unify network is created within this compose file. So now let's hop onto the virtual machine and let's get ready to run this. So on my Docker machine, I've created a new folder called Unify Controller within my compose folder, and I've copied over the Docker compose file, which is this in the background here. And I've also copied over the script to this location because that's where it's referenced within this Docker Compose file. Just make sure that those map up. Once you've done that, you should be ready to roll. So let's jump into the terminal and let's get this thing going. So I've navigated to the Docker Compose folder on my Docker host, and I'm simply gonna run the sudo docker compose up D. When I run this, it's obviously gonna pull both of those containers. They're quite weighty, there are about 800 megabytes combined. I've already downloaded that just to speed this process up. But hopefully now it's gonna go away and create that network and get the containers up and running. So now it's gone away and it's created and it's also started. So fingers crossed, we'll jump now into Portainer and just make sure that everything is as we expect. So over in Portainer, we've got the two applications running. That's good. So let's just check the logs. So we'll look in the application first. So this is the controller. That all looks good. It said it was waiting for the MongoDB host to be reachable. And then it started generating a load of stuff. So typically that means that it's found it. 
Let's go back now and have a look at the database itself. So jumping into the database, yeah, we can see that it started creating loads of tables and references. So if we just have a look at one of those, yeah, so here we can see things like Unify stat ping test. So we know that the Unify controller has access to this and it's creating all of the necessary files in the background. Excellent. So now we're in a position whereby we can add the DNS name we gave in our Docker Compose file. So for my example, unify.jimsgarage.co.uk, we can add that to something like PyHole and hopefully we can now navigate to that in our browser. Let's get on with that now. And bingo. There we go, we've got it up and running and everything seems to be fine. So if you're coming from an existing setup, you can head down to the bottom here and restore your server from a backup. Or if this is the first time you're going to do it, you can go through the installation setup wizard and you'll be presented with the web UI in just a few clicks. So I'm gonna restore from a backup because I expect most people are gonna be doing that. So I need to click this button down here upload a backup file, so this will be the thing that we downloaded earlier. I'm gonna click on that, click open, I'm gonna click confirm, and now that's going away in the background and it will likely need to reboot the container. But let's see what happens and hopefully this will be back up and running in just a few seconds. So yeah, excellent. That just did that in the background, it took about 20 seconds. So let me log in now and let's just see if everything is there and all my devices are available. So if I now sign in, and here we go, system uptime, just a few seconds, that all looks good. And it's remembered most of my devices, so this looks the same as my existing one. Brilliant, let's just go and double check. Yep, here you can see all of my devices and the switch is probably just about to come online, getting ready. Um, but yeah, everything looks to be, yeah, there it is. Everything looks to have been successful. So hopefully now that gives you everything you need to be able to update from the deprecated to the supported container. I'm not gonna go into any more detail on this video in terms of Unify. I know there's a ton of stuff out there and there's loads of channels that cover this. But if you would like me to go into a bit more of a deep dive, I know I've covered this in other videos where I've showed you how to set ports, etc., and do VLANs. If it is something you want me to do, do let me know and I will cover that. But I'm going to wrap this video here and if you've got any questions as always, hop onto the Discord and let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you find this useful, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.